a lot of people struggle with surviving in hardcore Minecraft, especially in the early game, and for good reason, it can be tough. But I hope by the end of this video, you'll be armed with the knowledge you need to survive 100 days. I will say, these aren't hard rules, just guidelines. If you ask anyone else for tips, they'll probably answer at least slightly differently. And this isn't a 100% survival rate. The only way to do that would be to hole up an AFK 100 days. I'll start with some general advice. Try and play very safe. A lot of deaths are from thinking you're more powerful than you are, or getting bored and doing something risky. Generally, try to avoid ravines, caves, and mine shafts. They're hot spots for death. Also, you'll want to overprepare for stuff like the dragon, the wither, and raids. With that being said, I'm just gonna go day by day for now. For day one, you should try and end up with at least some sort of cube house, whether it's a nice little cabin you've built up, or a terrible 5x5 wooden cube. Generally, plains and forests are good to settle in, as they're relatively flat for building and quite plentiful for resources. For night, I'd recommend sleeping if you can. You can always just hole up or mine, though. On day two, you should be searching for some surface coal for torches, and by nightfall, you'll want to hit the mines. You'll mostly want to strip mine, though. You'll want to make sure you save deep slate and lapis for later, too. If you have the torches to mine through all of day three, then by day four, you should have full iron armor and tools. And around day five, any food you forage will probably start running out, so I'd recommend just farming a little bit and getting whatever food is most accessible to you. If you live in a plains, that's ideal, although doing a bit of foraging and hunting to last until your farms start producing won't hurt. I'd also recommend farming cows if possible, but you don't need to. On day 6, you can actually work on your farm if you've got enough food from yesterday. Hopefully, by day 7, you'll be ready to hit the mines. If you mine through days 8 and 9, hopefully you'll have 5 diamonds by day 10. Now, most people would make an enchanting table and a pickaxe, and if you've got 30 levels or more, that's what I'd recommend doing. However, if you don't, then just keep mining. It's not worth it, the delay of needing to go and get a bookshelf set up, and you'll probably have enough diamonds by the time you have enough deep slate anyway. So I'm going to shift away from day-by-day -day guides a little bit, but hopefully by day 20 you'll have 42 diamonds, which is hopefully all you'll need. You're also going to want at least 30 stacks of deep slate, but with those diamonds you're going to want to craft a full set of diamond gear, two swords, two pickaxes, a shovel, an axe, and a hoe, and an enchanting table. If you already have a pickaxe and enchanting table, you don't need to craft those, and you'll only need 37 diamonds. You'll also want to go on an adventure for the stuff you'll need for the enchanting setup. You'll need 48 leather, unless you have a cow farm, and 144 sugarcane. That's 2 stack 16, if you can't do the math. Now, you're going to want to build a darkroom spawner. If you aren't familiar with a darkroom spawner, here's how to build one. First off, you're going to want that deep slate from earlier, about a stack of torches for spawnproofing, a bit more than 2 stacks of ladders, 4 carpets, 4 hoppers, and 64 trap doors per layer of your farm. So, you'll start by towering up at least 128 blocks, although no higher than you have ladders for. And you'll want to go over an ocean, if possible, for fall damage reasons. Once you're there, you'll want to build a platform with some walls, or at least one that's big enough that you won't fall off of it, just going from place to place. It'll also have to be big enough to join your mob kill chamber, enchanting setup, and your ladder. Then, in your kill chamber area, place four hoppers leading into a chest, then place four carpets on the hoppers to prevent XP from getting caught. Then tower up 23 blocks from those hoppers. If you want, you can go a block or two lower to make sure you don't build the farm too high and instantly kill the mobs when they fall. After that, you're going to bridge out 7 blocks from each side of your drop chute, and then fill in the other side. Then outline it, add another layer to the outline, then fill in the outline so you have 4 8x8 spawning platforms. Then build walls around those platforms like this. And before you cover it, you'll want to line your spawning platforms with trapdoors like this, and this causes the mobs AI to think that they're valid blocks to stand on and walk through. Then you'll cover it with a ceiling. If you want, you can add trapdoors on the ceiling to make it creeper only, but you will need 320 trapdoors per layer in that case, which is quite a grind, especially with an unenchanted axe. Then you can just roll for enchants, preferably until you have full prop 4, a sharpness 4 or 5 sword, a power 4 or 5 bow, and that's pretty much it as far as mob farm stuff goes. If you couldn't get infinity, I'd recommend getting about 3 stacks of arrows right about now because we're getting ready for the dragon. Hopefully, by now it's day 30 and you'll have some food from your farms producing. If not, then you can just spend some time farming or stealing from villages, and you should have plenty. For the dragon fight, you'll want to bring some slow-falling potions. I usually don't just because I find them boring, but also I'm weird. You'll also want a karch pumpkin, those arrows I mentioned, the food, the gear you've been grinding for, and a decent amount of blocks, although, as I said, being overprepared is ideal. 
But although we have most of what we need, we still need to go and get Ender Eyes. The Nether isn't too complex in terms of exploration, although if you can find a Stables or Treasure Bastion, you'll want to save the gold. Once you're at the Fortress, you can kill Blazes until you have about 10 Blaze Rods, and at that point you can try and find Piglins to trade with if you have gold from Bastions, and you'll want to keep trading until you run out of gold or have at least 12 to 14 Ender Pearls, depending on how much you want to risk it. Now, if you run out of gold or didn't get it in the first place, I'd go home. Exploring is not worth the risk. Now, to get pearls in the overworld, there's two rail routes. Running through a field, killing endermen. Clerics are more efficient, and killing endermen in the wild is pretty self-explanatory, so I'll explain the clerics here. Also, the endermen are more dangerous, so that's something to consider. Clerics offer enderpearls at 5 emeralds a pop at their expert tier. If you don't get the trade, then I'd recommend trying again with a different cleric. But, once you have the trade, you'll want to get at least 12 enderpearls, meaning if you don't have any, you'll need 60 emeralds. And you'll need some to level the cleric itself. Although sometimes villagers offer you discounts when you have a high reputation, so if norm murder or assault happens, you should only need 48 per pearl for a total of 48 emeralds. Once you've gotten the pearls, one way or another, you can craft ender eyes using blaze powder and ender pearls and throw them to find the stronghold. Once in the stronghold, fill out the portal and hop in with your gear from before. Then take down the dragons and crystals. All of them can just be hit with an arrow, even the cage ones with a little bit of finesse. Then just shoot the dragon and do not go under it. And do that till it's dead. You'll then want to go out to the outer end islands by throwing an ender pearl through the end gateway. Once in the outer islands, you can just bridge. Pearls are an unnecessary risk. Once at the end city, you can bridge straight up to the ship. Don't bother raiding the full city. Just glide to the nearest gateway once you're done. And once you're back home, the world is your oyster. If you plan to go beyond 100 days, you can start building farms and getting mending and such. If you don't, you can really do whatever you want. You can spice up your world or just quit while you're ahead. After these tips, I figured I should actually try and use them. So here's me utilizing these tips to see how much I can do in 100 days, although uh, I don't actually make it to 100 days. On day one, I got straight to cutting trees. By nightfall, I was already rocking stone tools in a terrible wooden cube house. With a basement and a bed, though. On day two, I gave walls to my basement and hit the mines. I'm aiming for iron armor tomorrow. I mined through the night and had 27 iron to smelt by morning. I also got some diamonds today. Well, I got one diamond. I also raided an abandoned mine shaft today. I was very safe about it, though. If I heard spiders, I was bouncing. I mined through the night again and got 39 iron. I'm probably set for a while. On day four, I was back on the surface and built a little chicken farm. I'll have to automate this sometime. Day five was mostly spent waiting around. I also started a wheat farm, but wasn't recording. On day six, I wanted to automate that chicken farm, but I'm already out of iron because I crafted a bunch of picks. The rest of that day was mostly just wheat farm work and fishing to make ends meet. I'll hopefully have enough food to mine tomorrow. I went into the mines first thing in the morning and came out on day eight with 19 diamonds. Although I'm not even close to done, I just needed torches. I did craft those diamonds up into full diamond armor minus a helmet. At night on day 9, I went into the mines and emerged on, at dusk on day 11 with another 23 diamonds, thanks to an extremely lucky mine shaft. Small issue though, I only have 4 stacks of deep slate, so I'll just mine up some stone. It took me till day 14 when I started the mob farm. You've already seen the footage from the tutorial. It took till day 20. I then went on an adventure for sugarcane and leather. I found a village. Hopefully their food stocks I'm stealing will last me till the dragon fight. On day 24, I got my first ever enchantment. On day 25, I did some enchanting. On day 26, I actually enchanted some stuff. I surprisingly was still enchanting on day 27. A lot of enchants happened on day 28. Uh, still just grinding enchants day 29. And you're not going to believe it, but on day 30, I actually did some enchanting. Despite all odds, on day 31, I enchanted some stuff. I spent most of day 32 just doing some enchanting work. And on day 33, I'm doing some chill enchanting. If you'd believe it, on day 34, I'm enchanting. I pretty much just rolled enchants day 35, but on 36, <laughs> I enchanted. Day 37, I'm almost done enchanting. Just kidding, the next five days, I'm still enchanting. But on day 42, I have some pretty good enchants. And now, on day 43, I have a portal to hell in the middle of a random cave. By day 44, I was speed bridging to the nether fortress. I came home on day 45 with 18 blaze rods and 18 enderpearls. I accidentally threw one though, and it spawned a little scrungly who I immediately killed. 
I lied, that was actually still day 44, but on 46, which is the actual night of day 44, I threw my first Ender Eye. Now on the real day 46, I'm fighting the dragon. I did a lot today. I beat the dragon, got my Electra, and got home without dying. Wait, did I just beat the dragon? On day 47, I spent the day adjusting to my Elytra mostly, but on day 48, I decided to go netherite mining. By day 49, I was pretty much done, and I'd arrived home on day 50 and upgraded my armor to full netherite. I wanted to play a full hundred days in this video, but honestly, I think it's a waste of mine and your time, and I'm not keeping the world anyway, so, and this is where my own guide ended, although I might make a standalone guide for the Wither and Raids. Also, I already have one for Ancient Cities, but that'll be it. Anyway, see ya.